Hello everybody, and welcome to the Forty and Slip Bedtime Stories. Tonight, the true story of the Bell Witch Haunting. The haunting began in 1817 in Adams, Tennessee, when the Bell family began experiencing strange phenomena in their home. First, the house was plagued with knocking and rapping noises and scratching sounds. Blankets were pulled from beds, family members were kicked and scratched and their hair pulled. Particularly tormented was young Elizabeth Bell, who was slapped, pinched, bruised, and stuck with pins. At first, John Bell was determined to keep the event secret, but soon confided in a friend, who then formed an investigative committee. John Bell's friends soon learned that the strange force in the house had an eerie intelligence. It soon found a voice, and from that day on was seldom silent. The spirit identified itself as the Witch of Kate Batts, a neighbor of the Bells with whom John had experienced bad business dealings over some purchased slaves. Kate, as the local people began calling the spirit, made daily appearances in the Bell home, wreaking havoc on everyone there. People all over the area soon learned of the witch and she made appearances in sounds and voices all over Robertson County. The ghost became so famous that even General Andrew Jackson decided to visit. He too experienced the antics of the witch and his carriage wheels refused to turn until the witch decided to let them. John Bell fell victim to bouts of strange illness for which Kate claimed responsibility. While he was sick in bed, the spirit cursed and prodded him, never allowing him to rest. One day he went to bed and never recovered. He was found senseless in his bed one morning and a strange bottle was found nearby. Bell's breath smelled of the black liquid in the bottle, so a drop of it was placed on the tongue of a cat and the animal dropped dead. John Bell soon followed suit and Kate screamed in triumph. She even made her presence known at his funeral, laughing, cursing, and singing as the poor man was buried. Kate didn't vanish immediately after the death of her proclaimed enemy though. She stayed around, threatening Betsy Bell to not marry the man that she truly loved, Joshua Gardner. The witch would never say why, but she did allow the girl to later marry the local school teacher, Richard Powell. Kate soon left the family but promised to return in seven years. She did come back and plagued the family again for two weeks. She soon departed, but many believe that she may not have gone far. Near the Red River on the former Bell Farm is a cave that has been called the Bell Witch Cave. Thanks to local legend and lore, many people have come to believe that when the spirit of the witch departed from the torment of the Bell family, she went into this cave. While the cave has become quite famous in recent years, there is little mention of it in the contemporary accounts of the haunting.